Newsflash! David Copperfield promises to vanish the moon. That would be funny if he actually did just destroy the moon using his vast wealth. I mean, he didn't say he was going to make it reappear, am I right? In case you didn't know, this will be happening in February, and as you can see here, he's made a little teaser trailer announcing the event. Although, I'm assuming he won't actually be on the moon when he makes it vanish. Kind of false advertising there. But hey, we live in the world of CGI. I know the smell and taste of dwarf. And AI. And look, I'm on the moon now. Do you believe me? Isn't it hard to breathe up here? Cool. Cool. David Copperfield has accomplished a lot in the world of magic, making the Statue of Liberty disappear, walking through the Great Wall of China. He impaled himself on a sword. He sawed himself in half. He lasered himself in half. Now that I think about it, that's quite a lot of self-mutilation. And the list goes on. Not only that, but he inspired the minds of magicians across the world. Mine included. I feel like I should have some kind of magician portrait like this, right? Maybe holding a dove? And now he plans to make the moon vanish? I mean, wow, they do say aim for the stars, right? The moon isn't technically a star, but it is huge. I mean, really, really big. So how's he gonna make that vanish? And I hate to break it to you, but he's not actually going to make the moon disappear. The question is, how will he accomplish the illusion of making it vanish? Well, my friends, that is the topic of this video. What do we know about the moon? Number one, made of cheese. Number two, not a star, as previously discussed. Number three, and this is not a joke, my dad used to tell me that the moon was his big toenail clipping he had thrown up there into the sky. Anyone else's parents tell them that? No? Well, anyway. What else do we know? David Copperfield is a wizard. This is all going down in February. Hmm, maybe that's important. In terms of astronomical events, Google has informed me that there will be a lunar eclipse in March, a solar eclipse in April, and a total eclipse of the heart in May. But nothing special happening with the moon in February, so we can rule that out. Hey, small interruption, I'm starting a brand new YouTube channel that's going to be crazy. Something never before attempted on YouTube. I'm calling it Channel Master. And the idea is that for an entire year, every month I create a new child channel under it, the topic which will be selected by you. So join me in this interactive real world experiment. Link in the pinned comment below. You can pause this video and check it out now. I'll be right here, waiting for you. In my research for making this video, I learned several things about the moon. One, it takes 27 days for the moon to orbit around the Earth. Two, regardless where you are on the Earth, we all see the same lunar phases. However, if you're on the northern or southern hemisphere, you'll see it upside down compared to the other person. And that's kind of trippy to think about. The other person on the opposite side of the Earth from me is just standing there upside down. Like we are, you know, feet to feet. Or maybe there isn't land there and he's just drowning in the ocean. Hmm. Number three, David Copperfield's magical secrets burned onto something like a DVD crash landed on the moon. Not making this up, happened in 2019. Maybe that's why he wants to make the moon vanish. To make the moon an offer it can't refuse. Bada bing. All this moon knowledge got me thinking. I guess he can only make the moon disappear for half of the Earth's population at a time? Since the other half of the audience has horrible seats facing just out into space, into the vast abyss of emptiness. This whole concept of making the moon disappear is really mind-bending. I would say it's even fun just as an imagination exercise, trying to guess how he could do it. Like, I wonder if this event will be pre-recorded or live. I'm assuming it can't be live because if he's making it seem to vanish for a small group of people on a stage, then everyone else in the United States could just look up into the sky and see that the moon is still there. If he does manage to do it live, I would be shocked. Also, will this be a standalone illusion or part of a whole television special full of magic performances like he used to do in the past? For me, I love to see him do even smaller magic up close and card magic too. All right, ready to talk secrets 
These are my best guesses. My first guess was something with drones, because drones have become so popular in recent years. Maybe he flies a big group of them up into the sky, each of them carrying some kind of lightweight display, and they effectively hide the moon for a moment. Guess number two. Maybe he drapes a big piece of black velvet over the entire moon's surface, and the black moon against the black universe is invisible? Nah, that kind of thing would never fool anyone in magic. Or, if we take a cue from some of the theories surrounding the Statue of Liberty, maybe David goes back to his old tricks. But in this case, he puts the entire Earth on top of a lazy Susan, rotating it around to face the opposite direction. Voila! Muno. Gano. Other theories have included some kind of hot air balloon going up, projecting the image of a moon on the inside. But the hot air balloon would have to be very large and very invisible. Maybe the weather conditions would have to be just perfect as well, like being very cloudy. You know, winter is, after all, the cloudiest season of the year. Maybe that could be why February is important? Number five. Or maybe drones plus a big piece of black fabric. <laughs> Just carrying this up. So it's hard to imagine how he would realistically and practically pull this off. And I'm curious if we will see it just blink out of existence suddenly? Or like the Statue of Liberty, it'll be covered for a moment and then revealed to be gone. That probably seems more doable to me. You know what? I'm going to ask now a few magic friends and see if they have any input. Time to tap into the magic think tank. Hey Jason, Sean Farquhar here. I know you want me to speculate on how Copperfield's gonna make the moon disappear, and to be honest, I think he's just gonna make the moon disappear. The guy's a genius. I mean, he's just gonna be standing here, snap his fingers, and the moon's gonna disappear. And that's what we'll see. It'll be crazy. All right, possible theory number one, David Copperfield will just snap his fingers and it disappears. Magic. By the way, very nice and artistically put together video, actually. That looked really cool. Next we've got... Hi Jason, hello community! It's Max Pitwell, Professor of Magic from Germany, and I have three theories how Copperfield could make the moon disappear. First, he's waiting for a lunar eclipse. Second, he's working hand in hand with Tesla and uses their satellites to cover the moon. Third, the moon will never disappear. Interesting theories. I wonder if that's even possible with Tesla satellites converging to block the moon. That would be insane. Even if that's how he did it and everyone discovered, I would still feel 100% satisfied. As far as I understand, the lunar eclipse won't be a factor, but the third option the professor mentioned is another vote for projection. And next we will hear from... Hi, here's wife from Poland and I've read some many theories online about how the moon uh, because of the cycles won't be so visible the day that he's going to perform it and maybe there is a way to show like a different moon. I've heard about the theory of satellites and my question is uh, whether I'd be able to see it from Poland because 30 years ago there was no internet globally and now it's uh, other challenges and knowing David Copperfield who is uh, probably the best magician alive uh, he probably did overcome this stuff, so I wonder if I'll be able to witness Vanishing the Moon from here, from the other side of the world. First off, very cute cat. <laughs> I'm jealous. Second off, another vote for satellites. And yeah, I am also in Poland now, and I'm curious if I'll be able to see anything from here. That would be pretty amazing, but I'm, I'm trying not to get my expectations that high. And lastly, we have... I have a good theory. Because I think David, I don't know, is difficult. I, I think he fooled me, he fooled me. <laughs> Already fooled. The prediction is we will just be fooled. So again, this is all happening in about a month and a half. Actually, you know, if David Copperfield were just a little more patient. I see that in the not too distant future, with the mass adoption of Apple's Vision Pro, society at large will be going about stumbling through their lives wearing Apple's augmented reality headsets. DC himself could just slip a little cash under the table to Tim Cook, just have the developers program in a mass hallucination for everybody on this day. All in the name of good old fashioned fun. Alas, we do not yet live in a dystopian future. 
When I was a kid, I was lucky to see David Copperfield perform several times live. My parents took me to the Majestic Theater in San Antonio, and the ceiling there was designed to look like the night sky with little pinhole lights twinkling like stars. It was fun and amazing with great music and really just felt magical. He incorporates such great storytelling as well. I remember after the show, standing in line and getting his signature on a souvenir t-shirt, he signed it right there in front of me using a Sharpie. And I also remember none of the kids at school believing me that that was his real signature. Hashtag childhood trauma. At any rate, we will see how this all plays out very soon. And not to be a Betsy Downer, but I imagine we will, might even be a little bit let down by the reality of how this turns out. And I would love to be wrong, and I would love to be fooled. But you know, when expectations are high, plus we live in the information age, and people are more aware than ever of technological innovations. On a more positive note, I think in this situation, the real power of David Copperfield making the moon disappear is the idea itself. Simply the inspiration it gives us to imagine and think creatively. To try and stretch out our minds in ways we haven't done since we were children. Kind of like the feeling we get watching magic. So enjoy that sense of wonder and remember. Subscribe, notification bell, smash the like button. See ya! Yep.